What's the first thing that comes to mind when we talk about trade? Probably these massive cargo ships with dozens of containers carrying tons of goods. Global trade has become synonymous with these metal monsters. They're heavy, they're difficult to control and sometimes a disaster waiting to happen. Let me show you what's happening off the Sri Lankan coast. This is what it looks like. That half sunken ship is MV Express Pearl and all that's left is a hulk of metal, a hunk of metal in fact, surrounded by thick black smoke. For the past six days, this ship was burning non-stop. The Indian and Sri Lankan Navy have been working round the clock to douse this fire. The good news is they have succeeded. The fire is out, but a lot of questions remain. How did this fire start? Was this accident avoidable? And what does it say about the world's love affair with containers? Let's start by track left India's Hazira port on the 15th of May. The course was set to Singapore, which meant sailing around Sri Lanka. What was the ship carrying? Chemicals and cosmetics, including 25 tons of nitric acid. Now, nitric acid by itself does not burn, but when it touches certain metals, explosions. That seems to be what happened here. The nitric acid leaked from one of the containers, and once the fire broke out, the monsoon winds did the rest. The whole ship was engulfed in flames. But this wasn't some accident. The ship's operator was aware of this leak. So why did they continue sailing? Apparently the ship tried to leave this container behind, not once but twice, first in Qatar and then again in India. But both ports did not have the facilities to store it. So instead of calling in help, the ship just sailed on. Can we then call this an accident? An accident happens through no fault of your own. This is negligence, criminal negligence, some would say. For a good part of the last six days, it looked like the ship will sink. Sri Lanka was preparing for an environmental disaster. A long list of things could have gone wrong. An oil spill, another acid leak into the ocean. Thankfully, the fire was doused. But we still don't know how stable the ship is. It is apparently tilted to its right and a handful of containers have already slipped into the sea. Controlling this blaze was not easy. Dozens of tugboats and helicopters were deployed. The Indian Navy sent three ships, one tugboat and a Dornier aircraft. Even then it took six whole days to douse this fire. And now the cleanup begins. Sri Lanka's beaches are swamped with plastic and metal bits, all from the gutted ship. Hundreds of soldiers are on the ground cleaning up this mess. It's an all-round disaster, one that could have been prevented. And for Sri Lanka, this is happening far too often. In September last year, another ship caught fire off the coast. The empty new diamond. It took seven days to control that blaze. Chances are this accident will follow the same template. The empty new diamond's captain paid $65,000 in fine. The ship's owner was charged $2.4 million. A similar complaint has been lodged against this ship's captain. So there is legal precedent for what is happening. But these fines cannot reverse the impact on ecology, the long-term effects on fishing or tourism, which is why we need to re-examine cargo trade. Too many ships are making headlines. Some of them are stuck in the Suez Canal. Others are exploding off port cities. The sheer number of these containers sailing around the world is mind-boggling. And the fact is, we do not have the infrastructure to support this. Do you remember what happened in Beirut last year? There was a massive explosion at the city port. Again, same reason, no infrastructure to support the expanding trade. So when countries talk about trade, time we discuss making this trade safer too. Captains and crew need more scrutiny. Negligence must be a criminal offence because the world was lucky this time. The next disaster may be unstoppable.